Okay, as part of a service, we're going to remove the burners in this RGDA ream furnace, an old draft hood furnace. It does have a hot surface igniter in it, and it has a newer style heat exchanger, but it does not have an IFC uh, integrated furnace control. It just has a uh, uh, ignition control, which is located right there. Uh, first thing we're going to do here if you can look you look close there there is a uh, there's a shield right here. There's a screw here and a screw there. I've loosened the screws already. You pull it out. You gotta be kind of careful when you pull this silly thing out of here. Uh, you can break the hot surface igniter if you're not careful. It's right there. It's where that hot surface igniter is. Uh, usually you haven't broken taking it out, but it could happen, I guess. Uh, okay, the next thing is you're going to take out the hot surface igniter. Okay, you can see right there. Taking the hot surface igniter, taking the, the uh, mounting screw off of there. Gently taking it out, lay it aside where it won't get broke. Now your burners are pretty much right there. A couple other things you have to do. This burner tube here has to come off because what it does is before the burner comes on gas will pass through here go out through here and it will have a little flame right above there and that will prove the flame to the hot surface igniter this proves through the hot surface igniter and that's got to be taken off at the gas valve Okay, here we've got this loose here, and there's a couple of mounts down below, and we'll pull those off. Okay. These brackets come off, sometimes they kind of tend to stick. This one doesn't look like it's sticking though. This one's pretty good. Next thing is you get a couple of screws here. And yeah, these brackets. Now off. And you can see those slots there just slides right out. While these burners are out, this is a time when you should be looking in the heat exchanger, using your flashlight up in here, making sure it's not rusted out, or uh, it uh, doesn't have any cracks in it. This is where a camera is really nice. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's certainly nice to have something like that in there where you can snake that thing in there and make sure that you catch every place. But let's take a look at the burners themselves. Okay, this is what the burners will look like. Uh, these burners run 25,000 uh, BTUs a piece on this, and it's a ribbon type burner. It's long and skinny, they call it a ribbon type burner, and a bunch of slots in it. You're looking for, uh, well, let's get a little closer on these. Okay, getting a bit of a close up on these slots here. Okay, when you look at these slots, you know, these are kind of rusty actually. They're, uh, you can clean these with a with a toothbrush or a wire brush, probably better a wire brush for these things. 
uh, they did, there was a tendency in a lot of these things to rust out and they'd just be gone. Uh, not so much in this furnace, but uh, some of the other furnaces a little bit later, I think the fire was a little bit too cool and it tended to rust and they had to make these things out of uh, stainless steel. But make sure these are clean right in here. That's really about all there is to these things. Uh, there's not uh, a whole bunch to them. You can run a brush across here because there's the tubes here. Let me see if I can get those where you can see them. You can see those tubes those holes in that tube there make sure those are clear uh, that's about it there's not much else to it the one thing I did want to say about this set of burners these are the adjustments here now the adjustments are wide open uh, that's typical an awful lot of installers would never adjust these things the newer ones don't have adjustments on them but uh, these things are open as wide as they'll go. There's a little bit more in the slot, but they're, they're not going to uh, open up any farther than they are. So it doesn't look like uh, when this was installed they were ever uh, adjusted. And we'll adjust these uh, in, with the flame uh, burning. Okay, we've got the burners back in. And I've got this tube up here. I just want to go over a little something in this tube. Make sure this thing is in there straight. You're going into aluminum, and aluminum's really easy to cross thread. So be careful, make sure it's actually going in there straight. Don't get real nuts on tightening this thing. Tighten it up good and snug, but don't get nuts on it because you can still strip it out. Okay, we're about ready to fire this thing up, and we'll see how it fires up. Okay, I want you to look at these uh, burners, and you can see there's some yellow tips up in the top there. Now, I've got the primary air shut off on all these burners. And okay, and we're going to adjust that... Uh, air adjustment until we just get rid of those lazy yellow tips. Okay, this is what you're looking for right there. Get those things so you don't have any lazy yellow tips. Compare it to this one with a closed primary air and it's got a lazy flame and it's a bunch of yellow tips. Just barely get rid of them and you got the right amount of air in here. Make sure you tighten these stakes up, the screws on there, to make sure that they uh, do not shake loose. And before we're done, remember this part with that little uh, fitting that went into the gas uh, valve? Be sure you leak check that. Uh, either electronic leak checker or you can use soap bubbles but be sure you leak check that before you're done and that's pretty much uh, burner clean on service of the RGDA